Hey, what's going on, everyone? Okay, so uh, we're just about done with the calculator. It's looking pretty good. Uh, there's just a couple of small things, and then you know maybe a big design change that I'd like to do. Um, but the the big change that I want to make, or at least code change that I want to make, it's actually not that hard. But I don't like that you have to. Um, you can't like chain your operators together. Okay, so what does that mean? So I would like to do like two plus two plus five plus six minus nine. Obviously, like none of this stuff is actually working, right? Two plus two plus two. I would like it to, as I'm calculating these things together, it's showing me the sum each time. That would be uh, that would be better. Right now, you're kind of required to between every operator, hit the equal sign. Three plus two equals whatever. So I would, yeah, I wanna make it so we can chain it together. And the thing that really needs to happen is, so there's the one thing that needs to happen and there's one catch that we have to worry about. The thing that needs to happen is every time we hit an operator, so let's say two plus five plus, I would like it to process that operation and display it on screen. Okay, so so that means we're gonna have to be saving, we actually need to save that value, like the, the save state value every single time. But then also, if I do something like two plus two plus, and then I hit, like I said, every time I hit an operator, I would like to process that value. But that's not totally true. If I just keep hitting operators and I'm not hitting numbers, then I don't want to process because maybe the user is just deciding, okay, wait, I didn't mean two plus, I meant two minus, something like that. So we have to pay attention to which state we're in. Like, are we in the processing state or are we in the, um, like choosing an operator state, things like that. So like I said, it's not actually that difficult, but there's a couple of changes that we need to make. Uh, the first one is, well, we do want to process the operations whenever we uh, whenever we select something, okay? So that's going to be the number one thing. So uh, even if we don't hit the equal sign, we want to make sure that we're processing that operator. Um, still, after we process the operator, we still want it to behave just like before. We're going to reset the colors and select that new color. One difference is we're not going to be saving the value here because in, especially like in the case of that first, uh, that first time, or even afterwards, I guess, every time we process, we want to be able to, we want to be saving that value uh, instead of just, uh, we want to save the value of the sum or the product or, or whatever. Okay, so yeah, we're not just saving that value anymore. We're actually going to do that save because we still will need to do that save eventually. Um, we're going to do that save in the process operation. And so you can actually see Xcode is telling me, uh, there's, I actually, I don't need this value anymore. Like since I wasn't, since I was using it in that save function. So I'm gonna get rid of that right there. Um, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna save it as I do my operation. So I'm gonna do save value equals, let's say in this case, value plus saved value. So what's gonna happen is one of the rules of programming as you play around with more languages, you'll see this a lot. Uh, the assignment operator, this equal sign is actually one of the last things that's gonna happen. So even if I use save value inside this expression, it will always do value plus save value first, add those together and then assign it back to save value. So this is a very common thing you'll see in, in programming. Okay, so I'm gonna do save value right there. Save value equals or I do save value minus value. Save value equals value times save value. And save value equals oh, oh, saved value divided by value. Okay, just making sure those operators are uh, happening in the exact same order. And then there is one, still one, oh, there is still that one last case where 
if we didn't have any operator if if we didn't have any operator like uh, selected right so I'll just say else and then we'll just do what we had before basically if there's no operator selected just whatever the value is currently on screen we're gonna save that now the display string no longer uh, like this like I, I changed the behavior so that this display screen isn't the result of this expression yet so I need to to modify that so I'm gonna say my display screen equals and I'll just oh I'll just do that string interpolation that we learned about so save value okay so this gets us this does that operation that we want we still have that potential bug well, it is a bug that we're going to have to deal with. And that's pretty easy as well. Okay, so now I can still do 2 plus 2 equals 4. 2 plus, oh, 2 plus 3 equals 5. But I can also do 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus uh, 8 minus 2 minus 10 minus oh minus oh yeah so okay you just saw where I, I i was doing it on accident but i ran into that bug one problem that we have since we're always processing the data is now whenever i click something okay whenever i click something let, let me do that again 2 plus 3 minus times okay 2 plus, yeah, I got some problems here. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus times minus plus. Okay, so we have we have some issues with this code, basically, right? It's always doing this processing. We don't want it to always do the processing. So we just have to, really easy, you just have to kind of pay attention to when you should be processing. So I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going up to the top of my view controller. I'm going to reorganize these variables. Uh, just so I have this variable should reset. Uh, I'm going to create another variable called uh, should process. And we're going to start that out equaling false. Okay. Now, whenever I click a number, that means if I click a number, and then I click an operator, I want to process. So whenever I click a number, I want to say should process equals true. Okay. And then before I actually do my operation, I want to check if should process equals false, I want to return. Okay. I'm not going to process. But I still need to process this time, right? So, so if it's true, let's say what I mean is if it's, so if, if should process is false, I'm going to skip it. If should process is true, I need to process this time, but not next time, not until I hit a number again. So I'm going to say should process equals false. So it was false here. If we got to here, it was true. And we're going to switch it to false. That's all. Okay, and then there is one slight issue where the only thing we really want to skip is the process part, uh, but we still want to reset right here. Right? So again, there's a couple of different ways we could do this. I'm trying to make it as clear as possible what we're doing. So I'm kind of you know, reusing some code. Oh, actually, I didn't want to copy that. I wanted to, I wanted to copy it. I didn't want to cut that. Okay, so if I'm not going to process, I still want to reset the colors and change the button, change the button color. Otherwise, I need to mark should process to false. We're not going to, we're no longer in process mode after this time. I should reset. That should be false. So actually, I could, I can move these here. Maybe that's a little bit less confusing as well. Okay. So. If I get here, that means I am going to process. 
If I hit the equal button, I'm definitely processing and resetting colors. If I hit any other button, I'm gonna process, reset the colors. Now that I've processed, I wanna mark should process to false and the label with the numbers should reset to true, okay? So let's run this. Two plus two equals four. Okay, that's what I like. Two plus two plus six plus five plus 15 times, notice that I didn't do any math at that point, plus five equals 20. Okay, so that's, that's pretty good. I think, you know, there's still some smaller bugs related to this project, but that's, uh, as good as we really care to make it right now. It, it behaves like we would expect the calculator to behave. Um, of course, there's, there's tons of other improvements we can make, but for normal calculator behavior, I think this is exactly what I would want. 2.3 plus 3.2. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so that's, that's it for the be behavior of the calculator. Um, we're gonna do a little redesign. Since we have the, the actual behavior of the calculator working, uh, we're gonna try to do a little redesign and make it look prettier. We could have done it at the beginning of the project, but um, I wanted to keep it simple and I wanted to show you how to do those IB inspectables. Before we go, let's make sure that we save this. So, hit add. I don't know what you would call this on a calculator. I'm just gonna say allowed for chaining operations. All right, all right. This is pretty good. Uh, okay, now it's pushed. All right, I'll see you in the final episode.